Today, I'm gonna to show you how I pack my Set 10 parachute. It's similar to an NC-1-1 Delta and somewhat similar to an SF-10. So the techniques are gonna be about the same, but this one specifically is for the Set 10. Now, I'm not a parachute rigger, but this is the way I do it. All right, so you're getting ready to pack your parachute. You're gonna need a few things. Number one, you need a parachute. Number two, you need a packing paddle. You're gonna need some weights. You're gonna need a line separator. You're gonna need some packing hooks. You're gonna need a parachute tensioner to stretch out your parachute. You're gonna need some retaining bands. You're gonna need some brake tape, okay? Normally you would have six eight foot tables or eight six foot tables for 48 feet uh, to pack on. I'm doing it on the floor and luckily I don't have to do it outside because I have a pretty long span all the way into my kitchen. So first step is to get the parachute out of the bag and stretched out. Hopefully, when you stowed it on the drop zone, you did a good job and it comes out fairly well. Let's see. All right, <clears throat> as you recall, the apex <clears throat> should be in the belly band. So that's how you find it. Attach it. Make sure it's tight. All right, ready to stretch out. Let's see how it goes. All right, so next we have to make sure that the static lines and everything and risers are untangled. This is where what you do on the drop zone really makes a big difference. Let's see how bad these are. So I got the two sides here. Let's look down there. Look at that. Pretty good, not too bad. I must have stowed it pretty well. So what I do on a drop zone is I start down here and I keep these separated and then I meet them at the top of the canopy um, and then I stow. That way when it pulls out of the bag, it's pretty good. I don't have all this stuff jumbled up. All right, so then let's pull this a little tight. Put them down here. One, two. One, uh-oh. That's not right. One, two. Okay. Now, we're gonna follow these all the way to the end. Come on. Okay, come in tight. So, if you look, on this side I have line 30, which means on this side I should have line number one. All right, once you have your lines separated, you should have line 30 on the right-hand side. 
in line one on the left hand side. That'll give you two stacks of uh, static lines here and in the middle you should have two sections of anti-inversion net. The top section connects line 30 with line one and the bottom section should connect line 15 and line 16, okay? So you lift your top one and that goes in your right hand. You should have two lines going all the way down to the connector link. Now I can tell already that my connector links are flipped at the bottom on the right hand side, but not on the left hand side. Let me go ahead and look at the bottom set and then we'll trace them down, okay? Follow along. Okay, as you can see, the what would be the right hand side, but on camera it's the left hand side. Uh, these are good on over here, but these are twisted. Okay, so these two are twisted here. So I'm gonna have to get off camera and untwist these and get them right. They should look like the right hand side. All right, I got that uh, figured out. All I had was uh, one of my uh, risers was flipped over. So now let's double check it. We're gonna do our four line check. So, grabs line one and 30. Grabs lines 15 and 16, you'll have your four line check. Now follow along. If you look, I'm gonna drop these two in the middle just to point at things. These two lines, 15 and 16, should go to the outside buckle on the bottom, and lines one and 30 should go to the inside part of the top connector. That's your four line check. Okay, so now we are gonna preset our 18 inch brake tape for when we're ready to connect the D-Link connectors to the pack tray. So what we do is this is the inside, this is the outside. We're gonna take our control line here, put it on the inside, slide the D-link all the way to the end. So there's a little gap right here and we can slide this through. So it looks like a C coming to the outside. Now we're gonna do the same thing on the opposite side. Now, as you can see, I have the control lines to the inside. And then I have quarter inch cotton webbing on the outside of the D-link connectors. And we're ready to go to the next step. Okay, so then we have to dress up our, our lines here. Make sure this tape is nice and even as we look from the top. Now we wanna make sure line 30 is aligned properly. So we'll find line 30, here's line 30, and trace it all the way to the end. And if you look, it's right there on top. Hey, I got that line free and clear. Line 30, line one. So at this point, we can attach our deployment bag. Now, we can do this now, or we can do this a little bit later, but let's just go ahead and do it now. So let's orient our, our D bag so the white part is facing up and it's nice and flat. We're gonna reach inside and grab the loop and just pull it through. Making sure the stow loops remain on top. So you're gonna take a double arm's length of quarter inch cotton webbing and you're gonna fold it in half so you have a double strand. 
then you're going to route it through the apex loop. Okay, so for the sake of ex explanation, we're going to call the side closest to me the bottom and the side away from me the top. On the D-bag loop, we're going to call this the bottom and this the top. So we're going to take the side closest to us, the bottom, and route it through the bottom and just lay it down. Now we're going to grab the top end and route it through the top end of the girth hitch. So then we got that. Great. Okay, so you're going to tighten this just enough so you have about four inches right inside. Okay, so let's tighten it up to about four inch gap, which is about the width of your hand. Now, then you're gonna start tying your surgeon's knot and you're gonna tie it right up here on top. So we'll do a one, two, tie it right on top. Then you're gonna do a single overhand knot. And then another single overhand knot. So this is what the knot's supposed to look like. It routes bottom, top, loop, knotted. And we wanna trim these to about one inch. Now it's time to pull some tension. All right, so now we're gonna get group separation. Gonna put the lines on either side. And let's put a weight on top. Okay, because we're packing this on the floor, we're gonna do it a little, little different. Usually when we're packing it on a table, we'll do the karate chop, look for line 16. But because we're packing it on the floor, we're gonna do it a little bit differently. We're gonna look for line one on the left-hand side, okay? So lines one through 15 will be on the left-hand side. Line 16 through 30 will be on the right-hand side. We're gonna flip this over. And there we have line 15. Once we find line 15, we wanna make sure line 15 is exposed all the way down. So we're just gonna pull it up and expose it. When you look all the way down, you should see line 15. There you go. Okay, so then you're gonna start with line 15 and you're gonna pull it down, but pull it gently because you don't want your radial tape to come away from the center. You're gonna flatten out your anti-inversion net and then you're gonna gently flatten this out. So the entire gore Nice and flat.
Then you're gonna trace the radial tape to the next one, okay? Make sure you get the next one. So I should be grabbing on 14, okay? If you look here, it says 14. Then the next one will be 13 all the way down to one. But as you can see, this one was tucked inside, okay? See how it was tucked inside? It wasn't flipped over. But that's why you gotta make sure you have number 14 in your hand, and then number 13, and then number 12. So then you go through all the way to number one and flatten it out. Coffee and bacon break. We've come to a very important part. Line six. This is a set 10 parachute. I know some people do SF10s. Some people do MC1-1 deltas. This is a set 10. They all have very slight modifications to allow you to, to make it a semi-steerable parachute. But this is the important part when you are getting these folds right because as you can see, there's gaps. So you, what you don't want is for one of these to be tucked in while you do the whole uh, gore. So make sure that you get every single piece of the entire canopy folded, even the anti-inversion netting and all the other netting that comes in. But sometimes people forget these. because they're not connected. Okay, so your left-hand side is done. We're gonna have to move to the right-hand side, but we don't want the left-hand side to get all messed up. So we'll strategically place some packing weights. Make sure they stick out so you can see them when you fold over. We don't want those things folded up in your parachute when you put it away. Now it's time to do the right side. Flip it over, just like we did the left side, and we'll start folding our doors. Okay, so we've got our parachute folded. This is called a flat fold. One thing we have to do is make sure we have 15 gores on one side, 15 gores on the other side, line 30 on top. So if I checked it, I did. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Fifteen. Fifteen on that side. So, next thing I'm going to do is pull a little tension. A little bit more tension. Next, we're going to dress our anti-inversion netting. We do that by placing our hand right about where the openings of the gores are, grabbing all of these together. And then that should pull them out. 
Do the same thing on the other side. Probably shouldn't step on your parachute though. Okay, now we need to check our air channel. Take line 30, keep your head in. You should have a nice clear air channel all the way down. But let's say you don't. Let's say you looked inside your air channel and you had some junk in there. So you gotta come, see these lines here? You gotta find them. And then one of them will be tucked in. So the one you find tucked in, you just pull it out and then you finish your fold. Then recheck your air channel, make sure it's clear. Now it's time for the long fold. We're gonna start on the right-hand side of the parachute. We're gonna grab the edge of the anti-inversion netting and the edge of the bottom radial lines. And we're gonna start folding. We wanna fold, if you come here, so you got line 30 on top, right? So you're gonna fold about one inch past that top line. And hold, and then place your packing weight on top. You're gonna take everything Keep following that one inch all the way up. Now you're gonna be ready to do the left side. One thing I didn't point out earlier, you want your packing weights, you don't want your packing weights coming way over here like this. You wanna keep them right about the edge of where that right side fold is. So now you're, and you're all the way down. Now you're gonna fold the left side. You're gonna do it just the same way. And you're just gonna fold it right over. Then you're going to go to the next one. You're going to take that packing weight. You're going to put it right on top. Now me, I like to flatten it out at this point. Okay, now it's time to start putting the parachute in the de deployment bag. First thing we need to do is release tension, okay? So, I'm here, release tension. Now, make sure if you have one of these things, like I do, it doesn't stay in there. That back. Also make sure that you got this still tied. It's good. We're gonna start by pulling the deployment bag down over the apex loop. 
I'm gonna flatten it out a little bit. And we want the stow hook loop or the stow loops to be on top, just like that. Now we're gonna start shoving the parachute in the deployment bag. We start by grabbing a handful. We start by taking our watch off, taking our rings off. This is where stuff can get stuffed inside. We take a handful right about at the bottom of the D-bag, and then we're gonna start off by shoving it up to the left-hand side. Our next shove will be on the right-hand side, and then we're gonna alternate. The way I do it, I grab a reverse grip, just like that, and then I pull the bag, and make sure, see this little pocket up here? Make sure you get all the way up in that little pocket. All the way up in that little pocket. That's where you wanna be, okay? Right there. Now, the next one is gonna go up in this pocket, and then you're gonna keep going side to side and filling it up. Come closer. Grab the bag. So we don't need this. I am just did that to show you the pocket. Grab the bag. Grab the bottom about right there. Go right up to the other pocket. Remember, Take out your packing weights as you are going down. So we're gonna go all the way down to the end of the parachute, right up to the anti-inversion netting. All right, we shove the parachute into the bag. We're down to the anti-inversion netting. Number one, make sure you still have line separation. Line separation. Take our packing weight off. Now we wanna grab this with our middle finger in between so we keep line separation. See that? Come close. Keep that middle finger in between to keep line separation. You're gonna lift up, remove the line separator. Put that stuff aside. Now, you're gonna take and you're gonna S fold this into the bag. And then, this is critical, put the bag up on its end. Make sure you hold this. Now we're gonna try to shove this down in there just a little bit more. Now, come around over here. We're gonna take this back up and move down the bag. So it goes right in between the stow hooks. Okay? That's where we want it. We did not twist the bag at all. Kept the bag there. It came down like that. Okay, so as we said, we have our lines coming right in between the stow loops. We have everything in there. Take your dog ears, put them to the center. And if you recall, you have skinny loop, fat loop, skinny loop, fat loop. Once the dog ears are in the center, you're gonna bring this flap over. Skinny loop, fat loop, skinny loop, fat loop. So, skinny loop goes in a skinny loop hole, fat loop goes in a fat loop hole, okay? Now, come in real tight. So remember, there's, these, there's two portions to the fat loop. There's like this little flap here and there's the loop itself. Just make sure Make sure they're like that, okay? Skinny loop goes in a skinny loop hole. Fat loop goes in the fat loop hole. 
You can put a packing paddle in between these. It doesn't really do me any good because my packing paddle is really small, but I'll put it in there for demonstration purposes. And then you want to take your, your hooks from the outside going in. Make sure you go through both to the outside. Same thing with this one from the outside in. Then you end up like that. This is what you want it to look like. You want the lines coming through the middle. You want the hooks. You want the loops. You want the paddle. Now, once you get in that position, you're gonna take your lines, okay? You're gonna kind of bring them out and they're gonna go straight over the top like this, all right? Then you're gonna bring your bag straight down. Now, remember line separation. Periodically, I like to make sure I still have line separation. I'm gonna take this out because it's gonna fall out. So as I'm stowing all these loops, I like to come in here and still keep line separation and then I bunch of put them together. I tend not to have twists. And I think this is part of it. I always keep line separation throughout my whole stow process. Plus I got perfect exits. Now it's time to do your first locking stow. You do your first locking stow on the locking stow uh, loop closest to you, okay? If you're standing on the right hand side. So use this. And what you want you want it to look like this okay so it comes out of the bag comes on the top goes to the free end okay so you just take it just like that all right take your hook Feed it through, make sure you got them all. Then you're gonna pull it straight through that hook. It's gonna go straight through. Okay, so now we have the lines coming out, looping around, coming back out of the loop and going out. We should be sticking out about an inch. Now it's time to do the opposite side. Okay, so it comes out of the bag loops around, comes this way. To do this one, we're gonna have the same result, basically. It's gonna come towards the bag, come out away from the bag. So it should look, come closer, should look like that. Okay? That's what it should look like. and then just make your stuff, okay? So you grab it. Okay, this is a problem some people have and I just had it, okay? See how I pulled it? I didn't pull it through I hooked it in there, okay? Just make sure, no matter how much you pull, you're not gonna get it through there. So just make sure that hook actually comes through this portion here on this flap, okay? So if you find yourself not being able to get it through, that's probably because you hooked the, the flap. So I'm glad I had that problem just for demonstration purposes. But as you can see, 
comes out of the bag towards the bag, goes back through the loop, away from the bag, towards the bag, away from the bag. So now we have, so technically this is the top of the bag. This is the bottom of the bag. This is top, bottom. So it comes in at the top, goes out at the bottom, comes in at the top, goes out at the bottom. Okay. And there you have it. Now we're going to get ready to do our first regular stove. These are locking stoves. This is the regular stoves. Before we do that, flatten out your back. All right. So we're going to grab the lines. Before I make any stove, I always get line separation. That's just me. I don't know. Some people don't do it. I do it. I get them. I shake them out and then I bring them back. Okay, so we wanna bring this down. So I'm grabbing up here and then I'm sliding the bag and I'm sliding the bag till I get to about right here, okay? But I don't want the free running end towards me. I want the free running end away from me, okay? So kind of do a little flip like this. All right, then I grab it, all right, right there, okay? Free running in is away from me. Let me show you. Free running in is away from me, all right? You want it through that hook just like that, all right? So you grab it, you take one of your hooks, come closer, okay, straight from the top. Okay, pull it through. Now, free running wind is away from me. Now, I want you to take a good look at what this looks like, okay? comes out of the bottom of the bag, loops down, comes over here. Now you see it takes a little twist here. Don't worry, that's supposed to be like that. Comes towards the top of the bag, out the bottom of the bag, and then this comes over, and it looks, it's supposed to look just like that. See how that comes over the top of these? It's supposed to look like that. That comes down here. It comes in. Then routes towards this side of the loop. And then that's going to route. And it's just going to be like an S. Okay? It doesn't twist. It's just going to be like an S all the way down. So now we're gonna finish the rest of our regular stoves. The cool thing about doing it on the ground is you can actually sit behind the bag instead of to the sides. This actually makes it easier for me. Your mileage may vary. So remember, get line separation each time, then bring it together. You want it to come, and the free running in is always gonna be away from you, okay? So, just like that, all right? So basically, you grab it like this. I like to have that finger inside. It creates a little loop. I can move it and it's not gonna do anything, okay? So, through, through, grab, pull. Okay? Okay, so remember, free running end is away from you, okay? Leave that there. Do your next one. This is my routine. Line separation.
bring them together. <laughs> and I usually do, this is how I do it. Just, I bring it there until my finger hits and then I grab. That's just my routine, okay? Bring it through, through the hook. Hook comes towards you. Okay. Line separation. My technique. Nobody else's, I guess, but this is my technique. Crap. Okay, we got down to the end of our regular stows. Usually we have about seven to eight uh, stows on each side. Uh, you may or may not have enough for a full stow at the end here. If you notice, I actually got this side of line stowed, but this side of line it isn't. Uh, we just wanna make sure it's nice and clean here. Okay, so then we're gonna take we're gonna to try to route it right about the middle, just make it nice and neat. We're gonna take these off of the connector holder there, and we're gonna keep them right here. Okay, and we're gonna slide. We're gonna slide the, the connectors up here, so they're right in the middle, all right? We want these lines remember we made these uh loop c c's here okay we want the steering lines towards the inside the steering lines are the red ones and we want the c's to the outside okay now i try to show you so we we're going to tie this we're going to tie the l connectors to these loops here, there's two loops. Remember the skinny loop from before? Then you have a medium sized loop, <laughs> all right? So it comes out of the bottom and goes to this one. The one that comes out of the top goes to the skinny loop. So it should look like that, okay? Come real close, inspect this. All right, bottom to here, top to here, okay? You're gonna do the same thing on the other side. So let's flip around. Keep your con connectors tight. Steering line on the inside. The bottom end goes to medium-sized loop 
top one goes to this one. Okay. So what we end up with looks like that. Now you're going to tie a surgeon's knot, locking knot on each side. Now, it's very important that you make the tensions of these knots tight, but more important that the tension for this side is the same as the tension for this side, because if one is looser than the other, as, it, as you uh, fall, it'll make the bag spin because one will break earlier than the other, okay? So you wanna do a double loop, tight, then single overhand knot, single overhand knot. Same thing on the other side. One loop, two loop. Single overhand knot, single overhand knot. Now, do not trim these yet. We got one more piece to go, okay? So you got the same tension on both of these, okay? That way they, oh, they break at the same time. Now, once again, make sure these are kind of stowed down the middle. You're gonna take the protector flap up, okay? Now you're gonna do a surgeon knot through this loop here, okay? You're gonna take your line through, and you're gonna do a surgeon's knot. One, two. Now, unlike the last one, you don't want this super tight. You want there to be at least about a finger of an opening in there. And that's because we wanna be able to cut that later. Okay, so leave about a finger's opening. You got the first double knot there. Then you do a single overhand, single overhand. Now you trim these to an inch and a half. So let's do the other side. One, two, about a finger's opening, single overhand, single overhand. And then we'll trim to an inch and a half. Okay, we're gonna cut these off at about an inch and a half. The very next step, this is what you need to do. Lay your bag down, put your hooks, both of them on top of them and look at them and say, I got my hooks. There's a very important reason for that. There's a lot of things you can do wrong in packing a parachute and it'll still open. But there's one thing that will lead to a catastrophic failure every single time. And that's if you leave one of your hooks here, okay? And you don't realize it you're gonna be a toe jumper. You do not want that. So before you do anything else, take your hooks out, make sure you got them both, and say, I got my hooks. Then set them aside, set them somewhere else. At the end of the packing process, we're gonna go back and look and make sure we have two hooks, how many ever uh, packing weights. I know I have five packing weights and I have two hooks. I have one paddle. Okay, at the end of the packing process, you're gonna lay it all out, you're gonna do a checklist, and you're gonna make sure you have everything. Because if you don't, it's probably inside your parachute. So, before we go any further, definitely make sure you have these hooks. Now, once we got that tied, it's time to move on 
to the pack tray. Number one, you want to make sure that your retaining bands are serviceable. That's Army talk for make sure the rubber bands aren't broken. Then you want to take a double length, double arms length of this brake tape. You're going to put it in the bottom loop like that, and then just lay that back to the side. And you're going to open. Now, your canopy release assemblies, you want them even, and then you're going to hold them. You're going to bring the pack tray up so that the pack tray is sitting right on top of the canopy release assemblies, and the canopy release assemblies are right in the middle of the pack tray. Right. Come down here. Next, you got to get a parachute on top of the pack tray. Take your suspension. Take your suspension line, bring them up, and then you'll have these loops. You want it like a V, okay? A V. Then you bring it this up and over. That way, your suspension lines are toward the pack tray. This is what it's supposed to look like down here, okay? So you got these buckles up here on top. If you look underneath, You'll have these, like a V, right there, just like that. Okay, see that? Just like a V. Next step. Okay, now you're ready to place your static line. If you notice, you got this little loop right down here, okay? You want that loop right in the middle, right in the middle of your parachute, and it's gonna leave some left over. There's about six inches right there. All you want to do is take it down and fold it like this. Okay? That's it. Make sure this loop is in the middle of this, this V here. Okay? Right in the middle of the pack. Okay. Now it's time to tie this. Alright? So you have this static line folded. It's important for the sake of remembering and for the sake of demonstration to label these loops. Six o'clock is here. Nine o'clock is here. 12 o'clock is here. Three o'clock is here. You're gonna start with your tape at the six o'clock position. You're gonna run it through your static line loop, through your nine o'clock, under the static line, through the 12 o'clock position, through the three o'clock position. You're then gonna put the ends together, start bringing it up. Once again, in the six o'clock position, through the static line, through the nine o'clock, under the static line, through the 12 o'clock, through the three o'clock, and tie at the 430 position. You wanna tie with a sur surgeon's knot, locking knot, one, two, so. Let's start getting this tight. Okay. So you want this circle here to be about the size of a half dollar okay about that size that way the jump master can get his finger up in there when during the jmpi finish 
with your two single overhand knots. Cut away the excess about an inch and a half. One. Now it's time to dress the bag. We'll start at the bottom. All you have to do is take your packing paddle and you see these loops here. So what I do is I keep it flat. I just stick it in like that and I stick the little part in and then I start feeding it up. Same thing on this side. Then I set the pack panel down and I just tuck with my fingers. Make sure it's nice and neat. Now you can do the top. Now, the top is a little bit more complex, but it's not too hard, okay? So, straighten this out. You got these dog ears, okay? The dog ears need to go on top of the risers. Just like that. Just like that, okay? Now, let's set this back down a little bit. Let's dress this. Now we're gonna do the same thing we did before. Okay, there you have it. Dog ears are in. This is nice and neat. Now it's time to stow your static line. The static line is gonna naturally wanna go to your right. And that's a good thing because that's the way it goes first. There's two types of retaining bands. You have these back here and you have these up front. You're gonna start with the ones in the back. There should be at least two there, and there should be at least three here. How long your static line is depends on what you're jumping out of. This particular setup is gonna be for a C47, so you have a five foot extension on it. Now, it's very important that you have this knot here centered when you get to it. You don't want it way over here or way over here. You want it centered. So keep that in mind when deciding how long you want your loops. But we're gonna start on the right side. I usually make the loop. Next time we come to the other side. Now, notice, no twists on here. Once you got two on the outside, it's start, time to start your inside. Sometimes I like to pre-plan how big my loops are so I know where the knot's gonna go. So I just put the knot there. Now I know how long my loops need to be. Clip your static line, 
take the excess, run it through that loop, tuck it under. You should be ready to go. So there you have it. You got a pack parachute. Final step, make sure you got everything. I have one, two, three, four, five packing weights. I have two hooks, I have one packing paddle, one line separator. I know I have all my equipment and it's not in my parachute. Well, there you have it, your chute's packed. Now it's time to go jumping. Keep your knees in a breeze.